I can hear the wind whistling around the peaks. Anyways, you can see where we came from. That over there is where I said I took the bathroom break. So, making our way. And these are some of the taller saguaros I've seen. Like this one right here is very tall. Ooh, great view. We're not yet up at the very top, but there are some ruins here I can already see. Look at these rocks. These were placed here. They're shaped too. Look at that. Look at that wall right here. So I'm basically walking in the middle of something, some kind of structure or division. Not exactly sure what. I'll pull out my book. I have a book that I was reading. That's how I found this place. And I could read you, read you some. Guys. Holy cannoli, can I talk? Read you guys some information about this place. Um, but you can see here. You can see here the. Uh, this was a room of some sort. As was this area back here. And the wall up there. But let's go down here first because I see old structures at the bottom here, but then we'll go to the very top. All right, check this out. Yeah, so all this down here looks like rubble as well. And clearly out here, there was some type of lookout area. Look at that. So this area right here looks really well preserved. Look at that. Over here as well. looks like some of these stones are almost like cut in certain ways. I don't know if that's true though. Maybe they're just naturally very sharp. Let's go into this little room right here. you can see this area would be a great spot to look out to the north. This was all built up. Look at that. All right, so according to archeologists, this site up here on this butte, including down here and up there at the top, which we'll see in a second, was not only a defensive fort, potentially, but it was also used for habitation, food processing, and many other things. They found evidence that they processed corn into cornmeal. Um, they found pottery that dated this, uh, this establishment, this, um, this group of dwellings to between 800 AD and 1200 AD. So it's, you know, potentially over a thousand years old, this, this area um, with all the stones built up here. And in total, this area had around 70 rooms, including some larger plazas down here on the lower slopes of the north side of the butte. So another thing is that archeologists, when they kind of um, excavated this place, they found seashells that came from the Gulf of California. The Gulf of California, some people call it the Sea of Cortez, um, that's not close, that's like over 200 miles away, so that's pretty far. So they were trading seashells, or they got them themselves from the Gulf, um, all the way up here, in a way inland landlocked location. So that's pretty interesting. These were the Hohokam people, or I'm not sure you say it, but 
they're a pretty ancient culture. They say they descended from people that lived in Arizona as far back or even further back um, as 8,000 BC. So, you know, this place is old. It has a storied history and they traded lots of things and they had a distinct culture and whatnot. And uh, anyways, it's pretty cool. I just had a snack, some water, had a bag of Cool Ranch Doritos and told myself uh, I was connecting with these people here because of the corn, the corn meal. <laughs> so now I'm gonna make the final ascent, make it to the top, the tippity top, and see what we've got there. These are old foundations right here. This might be one of the plazas because it's a pretty broad area. I'm not sure. That's really steep that goes, or maybe it's that flat area down there. Not sure. This right here looks like another room. Then you have those walls right here that lead up to uh, another level. Another enclosed space. You can see all the other rooms up here. these walls. Here's a very well-preserved room. Space right here with an entrance. Look at that. There's another room right next to it. There's an entrance right there in the middle of it. It's very cool. They used a similar type of rock to uh, frame the doorway there. More rooms right here. Here's the very steep bit. Oh, this was definitely constructed. All these stones right here. Yeah. It's very cool on the north side of the hill here. I can see why they would have liked the north side. Ooh, this is nice. Not sure what that is. Look at this wall right here. That's super cool. All right, so there's a little room right here, perhaps, and look at those walls. Wow. Oh, there's some uh, pictographs. Look at that. This looks old. This looks really old. There's some here that look pretty new, um, like these ones. But this is a very impressive wall. Still standing. Great view. Sorry, let me correct myself. This is a petroglyph, not a pictograph. Um, it's a petroglyph because I think it's been etched into the wall, into the rock face, um, into the varnish that covers the rock. Um, but I'm gonna take a look to see if I can find any more cool ones. Ooh, is this something? This looks like. I don't know, it looks like it was a part of something because 
Here's another piece, perhaps. I'm not sure. Again, I'm putting it back, everything right where I found it. Um, as everybody should, if they're in a pretty cool historical place like this. But I don't know what that was. It kind of looks like it could be something broken pieces of a rounded item, a circular thing. I'm not sure. But this is very cool. Again, it's my understanding that these are <laughs> modern. Those are modern petroglyphs. Um, that somebody, unfortunately, etched into the stone there. But look at that wall, and look at the view. That's so cool. So there was a wall on top of this block of rock as well. Not sure how tall they all once were, but yeah, this is very cool. I don't see any very clear petroglyphs besides the one I saw earlier. Um, I see some that maybe could be some old ones that are really d deteriorated, but what we're going to do now is we're going to go around and climb up to the top, the very top um, of the peak and get behind those walls that we just saw. These all look like crumbling rocks from the structure that was up here. And here's the back side of the wall we were just looking at. Isn't that very cool? Very cool. Wow. You could see the uh, ruins down there very easily now. Look at the foundations. All right, let's continue to the very top. <laughs> Just trying to imagine what went on at the very top here. I'm not sure. Oh, wow. Oh, we got some great ruins on the west side and the south side of this peak. There's a great wall still standing right here. Look at that. Now I'm assuming we see remnants of a wall right here, remnants of a wall right here, remnants of a wall right there. I'm assuming this would have all connected into one wall and would have made a nice fort here at the top. And you'd have a phenomenal view, of course. And all these stones you see tumbling down the hill are remnants of the wall that was once continuous. That's my hypothesis. Um, very cool rocks. Uh, okay, let's see. And then there was a room there. What's not unlikely is that these were all separate rooms, one right there, one right here, but it was one massive wall that connected them, the exterior wall. And uh, let's go down here. They use the natural environment to their, to their benefit. They use it, um, let's see, to be more efficient. You have that nice flat wall already just because of the natural, the natural bedrock. And then all you have to do is build a wall right here, a wall right there on that side, I guess. And then you have a nice enclosure. So this also looks like a wall right here. Yeah, it's very cool. I'm gonna see if I can find some more petroglyphs. Just wanted to take you right behind one of these walls here. Let's go into this room.
So again, this is that um, southernmost room that I saw that, that was built up with the bedrock on that side and the two stone walls um, forming a nice 90 degree angle on the eastern side. I'm going to try to get down here so you can get a better view looking up at this wall. There you go. Look at that. Look at that wall. So again, this is all likely over a thousand years old, all of this construction. And this was not just a defensive construction. I mean, it was clearly defensive, but it was also um, used just for daily activities. So lots was done in here, including, you know, grinding corn into meal, cornmeal, um, all sorts of things like that. Okay, we're on the west side of the peak. All these stones crumbled from the walls here. Some of the rocks back there are good for petroglyphs, so I'm gonna take a look to see if I can find some. But, um, yeah, very cool. If there were any petroglyphs here, I can't really tell if they're there anymore. Um, rock has deteriorated quite a bit, so. This kind of rock that was absolutely perfect for petroglyphs right here. Smooth, it's got the black varnish on it, but underneath it's a light color. Would have been great. All right. I would pay big bucks to see this place reconstruct, not reconstructed, but I mean just like an art, you know, like on a computer or something, reconstructed um, so I could see what it looks like. I don't want this place to be messed up. But, or just a picture of this place when it existed, you know? Um, I'd like to see it uh, as it looked a thousand years ago when people were inhabiting this place. So, yeah. Again, plenty of ruins down there. You can see the... Again, the three rooms there. There's probably way more than three. There's the curvy wall there. There's the curvy wall here. There's the way down there at the bottom by that saguaro. The lookout by the saguaro there. And uh, plenty more too. So, yeah, this was a very cool trip. Not that hard of a hike. You know, there's some steep spots, pretty steep spots. But... I think it's just cool to see the petroglyph. I might just go around the back here and see the petroglyph one more time. That would super cool. I'm assuming it's legit and authentic from that time. It looks legit. At least comparing it to uh, petroglyphs I've seen before. By the way, I just have to say, I love that I live in America and I love that we have these public lands. This whole area is a wonderland for you to explore the National Forest here, Tonto National Forest, this and more. Millions of acres, and not just the Tonto National Forest, public land all across this country, a beautiful country for you to explore. So you should take advantage of it because you're kind of paying for it. Anyways, here's that petroglyph. I just love it. It's like a little elk or deer. Oh wait, now I'm noticing that there's potentially more so see these these look like remnants of petroglyphs but like that when i look at it through the camera but then when i look at it in real life the only one that really looks legit is this one right here but it would make sense if there were more not not just that one it would make sense if this was a wall dedicated to art um it does seem like this could have been a similar one maybe that one i'm not sure Anyways, let me know what you guys think if you think those other ones are legit. I think at some point they probably were. If they truly are over a thousand years old, the elements would get to them to some degree. The one that I saw of the what looks like an elk was just remarkably well preserved. Anyways, it is so cool on the north side here. In the summertime, the north side of this butte would be magical. Magically cool because the rocks are cold to the touch. I'm touching them right now. They're cold, but if you're if you're cold, you know, if it's the wintertime and it's cold, even though it doesn't really get cold, go to the north side. Um, after the sun bakes the rocks all day, if it gets cold at night, just go to the south, go to the south side, I mean. Go to the south side and 
get that, feel those warm rocks and whatnot. So let's get down here. One thing to keep in mind is that the climate here was probably much different a thousand years ago. Um, <clears throat> you know, as is evident, as is clear, most people know this, climate is constantly changing. Cold, hot, warm, cool, ice ages, not ice ages, things like that. This place could have been more rainy. I mean, if they're doing agriculture here, in the valleys, even by the river bottoms here, I don't think there's enough moisture to grow corn. And they had corn here, so I think it was probably a little moisture back then when they were living here. And, you know, I, I think that's right. I think uh, I think uh, research has shown that this area was moisture, but then like 1,800 to 1,000 years ago, they entered a mega drought and that kind of um, destroyed a lot of the cultures of the Southwest. But, uh, yeah, look at this wall. This is a very nice wall. Cool. Here's another little wall right here. Look at that. Hold on. See it? Whoa, there's a, hold on. There's a really, really remarkably flat rock here. That's like perfect 90 degree angles. Look at that. That is really something. Uh, okay. Come on. I mean, that is, that is so. All right, guys, we're making our descent down from that knoll that's just to the northeast of the peak. Going down the steep, steep, deeply, deeply eroded road here. I love the evening light when it hits the Choya. Nice teddy bear choy out, out here. Teddy bear choy, cuddly, cuddly teddy bear choy. Cuddly but deadly. Kind of like most, um, most non-violent looking things in life. They can turn out to be the worst. It sounded deeper than it was meant to be, but anyways, we are walking down, walking back. Okay, beautiful Tonto National Forest. Six million acres, I think, six million acres perhaps, of beautiful landscapes, many encompassing the Sonoran Desert of central and sort of southern southeastern Arizona. Probably just considered central Arizona though. Thanks for taking along though, this is a very cool trip. Very cool, we were all the way up there at the top of that peak. It's kind of crazy when you look back and see where you've gone. And it wasn't that hard. I think it was like two, two and a half miles one way. Maybe about 500 feet of elevation gained at the end there. Not too bad. Once again, Ocotillo. Look at that cool shadow. It's making like spidery, spidery fingers. So many nice little places to have a fire around here really is great. There's a little bird on that Ocotillo branch. This is called a hedgehog cactus. Hedgehog cactus, uh, one of the varieties. There's many varieties of them. This is one of them. Look at that. That's pretty cool. Some grasses here. I don't know if these are the invasive ones. But, yeah, look at that. Little stripe. Doesn't that look like an elephant trunk or something? Pew. That one over there also, look at that. Check this out. That's super cool. It's like he's dancing, this saguaro. Well, if he had four arms, maybe one, some are, maybe the two are arms and the other two are legs. Anyways, yeah, I got two curving up like that and the other one's going like that. That's kind of funny. Oh, that's super funny. Like he's uh, doing the tango. Is that a dance? 
I think that's a thing. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe that has nothing to do with this. Anyways, just a cool looking cactus. You know what? Maybe not like the tango. Maybe more like ballet, like a ballerina. All right. Walking back. This is a really cool area with different stones laying around. So when it rains, if you get a torrential rain, that's uh, you'll get a lot of runoff here, and that's pretty evident, and it's probably exposed to these rocks, something like that. Again, lots of pretty stones here. Back in our otherworldly landscape. This is just so cool. And I'm very glad for the road because if you had to walk through that forest of of Choya, oh my gosh, you would you'd just be stepping on them left and right. I mean, look at that. Guys, I completely forgot to check out the Coil Spring, the spring that I f saw on the map. So uh, maybe you can check it out if you ever come out here. Otherwise, I don't know, it'll probably be a while before I'm in this specific location. So if you've ever seen it, let me know if it's a good spring, if it's running like year round or something like that. But I forgot about it today. So here's an area for Target practice that I didn't see earlier and uh, there's a little bit of a valley right behind it which is good but there's a there's a desert wash that runs through that valley but uh, anyways actually <laughs> it's just like a party area I mean looks like there was a big fire here the Outback. It's like Australia. Could, well, this doesn't really look like Australia, but it feels like the Outback, you know? Crocky. Anyways, <laughs> we're almost back. I just saw a big, big desert hare or jackrabbit uh, cross the road here. You know, the ones with the huge ears. That's fun to see. I like that. You know, they have big ears because it helps them regulate their heat, not overheat. Big surface area and the ears helps them cool down, stay cool. So just another desert adaptation. Fun fact, javelina, the little pig-like animals, some people call them peccaries, they eat prickly pear cactus. All of these chomps taken out of these cactus pads, you can blame the javelina for that. Isn't that crazy? They will eat right through the spines. So they just went to town on this one. It's very, very cool. It's crazy. Pigs gotta eat. All right, guys, we've made it back. What a beautiful evening. Nice and cool now. The sun's still out. Feels great. Anyways, thanks for watching. And I hope you guys have a great day or great night, wherever you are.